This is part 31 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to retrieve event data using event object and how to convert a JavaScript event object to a jQuery event object. Whenever an event occurs, like the click event, mouse over, mouse out, mouse move, etc., the relevant data about that event is placed into the event object. For example, the event object contains event data like the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer, the HTML element that fired the event, which mouse button is clicked, etc. Obtaining the event object is straightforward. The event object is always passed to the event handler method. Let's understand this with an example. So on this form, we have this button. When we click this button, we want to capture all click event related data. So here we are capturing the event type, which is click, the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer when that click event occurred, the target element on which the click event occurred, in this case it's button, and the target tag name, so the tag name that we use to create the button element, it is input tag name. So let's see how to capture all this click event data. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have the button element and the div element to display the result. And within our script section, we have the ready function wired up. Now since this button has got an ID, let's use the jQuery ID selector to find that button and the button ID is btn. So we want to handle the click event of the button element. So this anonymous function is going to be our click event handler method. Remember, the event object is always passed to the handler method. So this function is going to receive the event object. Okay, and we're going to use this event object to retrieve the data that we want. So it, this will be passed automatically to the handler method. So what is the event data that we want to display? We want to display event type, x and y coordinates, target type, and target tag name. So let's create a variable here. Let's name this event details equals. So we want this word event equals and then the event name. And to get that, we're going to use the event object. And it has got the type property, which should give us the event type. And then to this, let's append an HTML break. OK, so let's make a copy of this. Next, we want x coordinate of the mouse pointer, so x equals event page x should give us the x coordinate. Similarly, we want the y coordinate. And to get that, we use page y. And then we want the target element. So target element equals, we can use the target property of the event object. And then use the type property on that. And then we want target element tag name equals event dot target dot tag name should give us that. OK, so this string now contains all the event data that we need. All that is left is to find this development and then display that string within that development. This development also has got an ID. So let's use the jQuery ID selector again. And this time, the ID that we want to find is div result. And then let's use the HTML method and then pass to it this string that contains our event data. All right, so let's save the changes. And let's reload this page. And look at this. When we click the button, notice that the event is clicked. We get the x and y mouse coordinates. The target element is button. And the tag name is input. OK, now let's also see how to capture mouse over and mouse out event details. To capture mouse over and mouse out event details, you can simply chain the events together. And so here at the end, I'm going to simply say mouse over. And this is going to be our event handler function. And then we are going to duplicate all this code within this function. Instead of that, what we can do is actually create another function. So within our ready function, let's call this get event details. And to this function, we are going to pass the event object. And let's actually take all this code 
and move it into this function. We can also move this line. And then within the event handler method, we are just going to call this get event details function. And then to that, pass the event object that this handler method receives. Okay, and let's do the same thing on mouse over. And we can also chain similarly mouse out event. And again, on mouse out, we want to call the same function. So now we should be able to capture mouse over, mouse out, and click event details. So let's save the changes. Let's reload this page. And uh, you know, in all the cases, we are passing the event object. So here, you know, let's pass the event object to the handler function, and the same here. Okay. So this function receives the jQuery event object, and that is automatically passed to this function. And this function retrieves the event details and then displays them within the div element. So let's save the changes now, reload the page, and look at this. As we mouse over, we should get mouse over event details, and then when we click, click event, and on mouse out, we get the mouse out details. OK, so this example is going to work, work across all browsers, including IE 8 and earlier versions as well. So let's actually browse this page with Internet Explorer. At the moment, the version of Internet Explorer on my machine is IE 11. So at the moment, look at that mouse over, mouse out, click. All the events work. Now let's change the browser mode to IE7, OK? So it's running in IE7 mode now. And let's reload that. And look at this, mouse over, mouse out, click. Everything works now. Now the reason this works across all browsers is because this event object, which this handler is receiving, is a jQuery event object. And jQuery is cross-browser. So this code is going to work across all browsers. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I don't pass this event object to the handler? So I'm going to remove it from this anonymous function, which is the handler for the click event. Similarly, I'm going to do it for mouse over and mouse out events as well. OK, so the handler function to the handler function, we are not passing that event object. And within that anonymous function, we are calling this get event details function. And to that, we are passing an object. And that's called event here. Right, and you know we are retrieving whatever event data that we want, right? So the event object gets passed here to this get event details function, but that event object is not the jQuery event object; it is the raw JavaScript event object. Okay, so and because that's raw JavaScript event object, and in IE eight and earlier versions, page X, page Y target, you know, all these properties are not supported in, in those versions of, you know, Internet Explorer. As a result, this code is not going to work in IE 8 and earlier versions. Let's actually prove that. So let's close this browser. Now let's actually reload this in Google Chrome and prove that it's going to work. Look at that. In Google Chrome, it still works after our changes. Now let's browse this with IE. And it, since this is running in IE 11 mode, it should still work now. Now let's go ahead and change the mode to IE 7. And look at this. The moment I move the mouse over, we get an error. And look at this. When I hover the mouse over type, you know, it says it's mouse over. That's fine. But look at this. Page X is undefined. Page Y is undefined. Similarly, target is undefined. OK, so this piece of code is not going to work in IE 8 and earlier versions. That's because, you know, this event object is raw JavaScript event object. And page X, page Y, target, these properties are not supported in 
IE8 and earlier versions. Now, for this code to work in all browsers, if you want a cross-browser solution, one way is to pass the event object to this handler function. So when you do that, this event object is automatically a jQuery event object, and that's what is passed to this function. Since that is jQuery event object, this is going to work across all browsers. And we have just seen that. That is one way. The other way is to convert this event object explicitly to a jQuery event object. We know this is a raw JavaScript event object. And to convert this to jQuery event object, you know, we use dollar dot event dot fix method and to this fix method we are going to pass this raw JavaScript event object and that method is going to convert that to a jQuery event object and at all these places let's use e now all right so let's save the changes and let's reload this. So at the moment, this is running in IE 11, so it should still work. Now let's go ahead and change the mode to IE 7. And look at this. It works now. And even in Google Chrome, when we reload this, it should still continue to work. OK. And here is that example, which we just discussed. So to convert um, a JavaScript event object to a jQuery event object, use $.event.fix. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.